everyone, uh, welcome to the video today. Today we're talking about how we can set up Hard Hat to interact with the Ethernaut over the wire inspired challenge, which is where you do a whole lot of Web3 and Solidity hacking, which is really fun and really cool. Um, I'll show you how to set up your local blockchain so everything is running locally, um, and then how you can use Ethers JS to then, uh, within the Hard Hat framework, to interact with this local blockchain and basically have this entire thing run uh, offline or locally, sorry. Um, uh, I do recommend doing this just because it's a lot of fun so you can see what happens actually to the blockchain uh, rather than relying on something like the Rinkeby network or the RUPC network um, and you fully control the entire environment. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is head over to the Ethernaut Open Zeppelin um, website and this is where you can actually go through these challenges, but just doing it online. Uh, however, that goes against what we're trying to do today. So we'll head over to the GitHub and uh, we have uh, the instructions on how to set this up locally here. So we're gonna go ahead and follow with that. Uh, and then we, I can show you how we can set this up using hard hat. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is clone this code. So I'm gonna be using the Windows subsystem for Linux. This should also work with the, um, uh, just the regular Windows terminal but uh, like command, command prompt uh, or PowerShell, but I just prefer using Windows Subless System for Linux. So once this is installed, we can go, uh, sorry, cloned, we can go ahead into the Ethernaut folder and let's go ahead and install all the dependencies. So this will take a couple of seconds just to download everything that it needs to download. So I will be back once that's done. Cool. All right, so that's done now. Uh, once all those dependencies are installed, I, I will note though, you will need Node installed. I realize I should have said that before. So uh, Node comes with NPM. Um, you can also do NPM as well, uh, or Yarn, just depending on what you want to do with your package manager. This won't cover how to install Node, but just note that you will need that when you're running this. The next thing that you want to run is Yarn Network. So Yarn Network will basically uh, start up the local blockchain on your... Uh, local instance and yeah so you can see here we have the local blockchain running at 84 on port 8545 and we have the 20 accounts here which are already preloaded with 10,000 ethereum so before we continue what I want to do is actually connect our metamask such that we can use one of these accounts okay so once this is up and running um, what we want to do is we want to import one of these private keys into our MetaMask. So what you want to do is just literally copy a private key, just any random one. I don't recommend doing the first one just because it's the default key and it may actually be used by the Ethernaut challenge. So just grab another one. And you want to jump into your accounts, import account, and paste that string in there. And then once you hit import, you'll then have a new account which should connect to your local blockchain. You should see that there'll be some data which is trying to call, uh, you know, ETH call, all this kind of stuff. It's trying to call the blockchain. That's good so you can see that they're interacting. If it's not happening, the other thing that I do want to check is when you head to your MetaMask settings, head to networks, and then head to localhost 8545. And what you wanna make sure is that this chain ID is set to 1337. This is really important. I don't know if the default is 31337, but this is what we need to use uh, when we're working with this Ethernaut uh, program. So um, once that's all set up, you can verify that you have the 10,000 Ethereum and we can continue. So we've got our local blockchain set up nice and quick and easy. The next thing we need to do is compile our contracts. Now we do need to keep this running in the background. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'll zoom in again for everyone. And we're going to head to, I can't spell today, uh, back here in our cloned repository and we're going to compile the contracts so this is just going to get all the contracts that are needed for this challenge or the challenges and compile them uh, we've got a few warnings there but that's okay uh, the next thing that we're going to need to do is make sure that we're using the correct network so you can see here it's saying to go to client source constants and edit that network so we're going to jump into client slash source and we're going to edit the constants.js so i believe on line 66, we have this line here called export const active network equals networks.rinkaby. We're gonna go ahead and change that to networks.local. So we can go ahead and save that. 
and then we come back into the root of our repository and we're going to go ahead and deploy our contract. So this is going to get all those compiled contracts and then deploy them to the blockchain over here in our local network. So you can see it's going to ask us, you know, there's all this kind of stuff. They've uh, redeployed, uh, recompiled it and it's asking us if we want to deploy it. I'm going to type you Y and you can see we've got a whole lot of contract interactions here or blockchain interactions. So now all these um, contracts are now deployed. What we want to do is run the actual front end. So this will just start up the React server, open up a, uh, a new port on port 3000 where this is serving. And ideally once this is compiled, we can, um, uh, we should be able to see it. Oh, perfect. Okay, so now once this is done, you can see we're running on local host and uh, you, sh you probably won't see a few ticks down here. That is only just because I was playing around with this just beforehand, but don't worry about that. Um, and so now once this is up and running, I want to show you how you can interact with uh, this Ethernaut um, application using hard hat rather than what they uh, recommend, which is using the, the Chrome console, uh, which really can only get you so far. So we've got this ad uh, address here. What I want to do rather than actually show it, I'm just going to show me interacting with this instance. So I'm going to go ahead and get a new instance here. Now I'm setting my nonce to zero here because this is a fresh blockchain um, and you may need to do that and run in, you may run into issues. If you get a transaction that fails, jump into your Chrome console and you should see down here that there is a, um, uh, there's an error and tells you what nonce it should be. Okay, so we get the instance address here and that's all good, but we're gonna hold off on that and we're gonna set this up in hard hat. So, now, we want to be able to interact with this. So what we're gonna do is we have our ethernet directory, we're gonna leave that alone, and we're gonna create a new directory called solve. So we can jump into solve, and we're going to npm init. So we're just gonna start this. You know, you can name this whatever you want. Um, I'm just hitting enter to go through, and this will generate a package.json, which will initialize this file, um, this folder to be a, a node um, file, folder. Uh, and then we can go, M, uh, sorry, npm install hard hat. So hard hat, if you aren't familiar, is the framework um, for developing smart contracts and interacting with those smart contracts, testing smart contracts and all that kind of stuff. It's a really, really cool framework. Um, I've been playing around with it a lot recently and I really, really like it. Uh, it also is powered by ethers.js as opposed to web3.js. So ethers is just another implementation that allows you to interact with the blockchain. I personally like it a lot more, um, but I think it's, it's, it's really cool. So uh, we're gonna wait a little bit for this to install. All right, so that's gone ahead and completed. And so the next thing that we're going to do is npx hard hat, not npm. And so this is going to essentially uh, is the initialization for the hard hat project. I'm going to use an advanced sample project that uses TypeScript. Um, I just really enjoy TypeScript and also um, it really helps you to, um, I'm just going to hit enter now, uh, helps you to uh, stop making silly mistakes and stuff like that. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to just add this. Uh, we do want to install these dependencies. So these are just things that help you like TypeScript, TS node, um, other testing frameworks and all this other stuff. This does take a little bit of time to install. So I'll be back once this is done. Um, so give me a moment. Okay, we're back and this is completed and it took around two minutes to complete. So now that we have this, we can have a look at our uh, folder here and we can see we have a whole lot of stuff. So I'm gonna open this in VS Code just so we have a nice browser. And let me close all this. And you can see here we have a, a whole lot of stuff. Now this looks very intimidating, um, but don't worry about it. There's only like really three main things that you need to worry about at least initially. Um, the first one is your hardhat.config. So this is the config for your hardhat instance and you know the compiler, how it compiles, the, the networks that it uses and all this kind of stuff. Uh, the other thing that we are interested in is in the scripts. So this is the scripts that interact with the blockchain. So, you know, for example here, this is deploying a contract and then running a uh, function of that contract. And then finally, we have the contracts here themselves. So um, we have the greeter, which is the default one here. So what I'm going to do is show you how we can interact with an example one that we have here. So let's go back to our 
fallback challenge here. And we're gonna copy this contract and import it into our project. So over here, we're gonna copy and paste this in. This is now the fallback address. I'm gonna rename this to fallback.sol. And you'll notice a few things here. So we're gonna get an error that uh, the compiler version doesn't match. Uh, this is because our compiler version by default is the latest, I believe, from Hardhat. So you can see that our Solidity version is 0.8.4. So we're gonna change that in a second. And the other thing is that we're gonna have to install the Open Zeppelin contracts, uh, the, the library there, um, especially for the safe math stuff. So. How do we do this? So the best way to do this that I found is that you actually wanna use the same as the actual Ethernaut repository. The reason why is because then you're using the exact same and you can interact with it in the exact same way that, uh, that you've deployed it as. So let's go into contracts and you'll notice that there's a hardhat.config here. So you can see there's two compiler versions that they've listed here. So I'm just gonna copy this entire Solidity object and I'm going to paste this here and let's just format this and you can see now we have these two compiler versions and uh, the other thing is we need we need to make sure that this network is the, a chain ID of 1337 I think it's that by default so I don't think we're going to need to change that but I will edit this if I need to um, and then the final thing that we need to do is make sure that we have those library from uh, for the safe math library so if we go to the package.json we can see that there's the open zeppelin ca contracts uh, package which they have installed and it has version 3.2.0 now this isn't the latest version so to actually make this work you need to install this specific version so in my terminal I'm going to run npm install open zeppelin contracts at uh, version 3.2.0. So we can go ahead and install that. Cool, all right, so now that's installed, uh, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is see if we can actually compile this contract now. So once this is done, we can run npx hard hat compile, and we should see, there we go. So we've generated uh, the types and, and we've, we've compiled this contract, which is great. Uh, and now what I want to do is I'm going to rename our script under the scripts file uh, just to be called test because we're not deploying anything necessarily. And let's go ahead and get rid of all this. Uh, we don't need any of this. So we just have our main function. And so what we're going to do is uh, I, uh, we're going to set our contract address, I can't spell, and our uh, player address. So our player address was that address that we imported into MetaMask initially. So the contract address will be uh, over here, uh, the one that we found in the console here. So we can just grab this. I don't know if that's highlighted or not and paste it in here. So that's the contract address. And then the player address is the one that we imported into our MetaMask, which is hard hat. So I can copy that and paste that in here as well. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna need to do is uh, generate a signer. So our signer is going to be ethers.getSigner. So signers are just these default ones that um, Hard Hat had set up, which showed with those 10,000 Ethereum at the start of when we started up our local blockchain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do get signer and I'm going to require the one which has the address of our player address. So this basically loads the private key um, so you can sign messages and send transactions from this address here. I'll show you why that's important in a sec. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is uh, load our contract. So the way that we do that is we uh, create a new variable, we'll call it contract, and it's again uh, using the ethers framework, but again, we're going to use a custom function which is implemented from Hardhat, and it's called get contract at. And so this requires a few things. One is the name of the contract that's been compiled. So we compiled the fallback uh, a contract, like that. that's what the name of it is. The address of the contract, where this is deployed at, we know this is at our contract address. And finally, who is gonna be the one that's interacting with this contract when we're interacting with it, and that is using the signer address. So uh, I believe that's, ooh. there we go. Okay, so what is this saying? Signer. Oh, my bad. We need to await this because these are asynchronous function that return um, that return promises. 
Cool. Okay, so now once that's done, uh, we now have a contract object that we can interact with. And so let's just ha let's have a look at a function that we may be able to uh, call. Uh, let's go uh, owner. So let's just see if we can read the owner uh, variable because it's public. So we can go const owner equals contract dot owner. And of course, again, we need to await this. So you just do contract and then whatever the method name is. Um, it has params, you pass them in. It's pretty simple and straightforward. And then let's just console.log uh, the owner. Cool. All right. So again, just a quick recap. What we do here is we get the signer address and we uh, import the private key so that we can interact with the contract with this signer address. Then we load the contract um, by getting the contract at the specified address that's been deployed from this uh, with that specified contract that we had compiled. Then we call the owner function or uh, this is a public variable on the contract and we await for that to return. And once we get that, we're just logging it. So to run a script using hard hat, we're gonna do npx hard hat uh, run and then the path to the file that we're going to run, which is scripts test.ts. And you also want to make sure you specify the network as localhost, otherwise, it will just spin up a local blockchain to do this. So we're going to go ahead and hit this. And there we go. So you can see that the owner of this contract is uh, at this address. And to just triple verify this, we can go ahead and in our Chrome tools, let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, we can await contract.owner as the same thing. And we can see we get the same result. So this is really cool and how you can start to interact with it. Um, this is how I, how I set it up. And yeah, I hope you guys found this useful and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.